case, two brands decided to share their know-how, their experience, their products, their skills. So they are sharing many things because they have a one common goal. To start off right now, um, we're going to introduce our first guest. Uh, her name is Maria Cristina uh, Yazeli, and she is the strategic she is a strategic marketing manager and business mentor who has worked with some of the biggest brands and companies in the world, heading international projects with Campari Group and Unilever's portfolio of brands. So that is a massive, massive company. Well, both of them are, and we're very, very happy. Maria, to, uh, to welcome you to our panel discussion today. Hello, Maria Cristina. Thank you, Yossi. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited. And also, Yossi, you have to offer me a drink because uh, I'm going to start. So <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, as Yossi said, uh, the, uh, their idea today is to share with you uh, what you should do through or text the social media platforms. But I think uh, that uh, my, my help can be also because uh, talking about the point of view of a brand or a company. I've spent a lot of time working in a company. So I'm not probably an expert as Yossi, Luca and Michele and I think the other guests are on their uh, uh, discipline because I'm a brand, I was brand manager, marketing manager, event manager, uh, director manager, so uh, marketing director, whatever. But the point is that I, I has been uh, always working with uh, an agency or more than one agency as a partner. So I learned a lot and I have, um, I hope I can bring you some uh, interesting point of view or some interesting answers. Uh, it depends on the questions, right? Yeah, no, no, of course. And I think, you know, the, the great thing about having, and by the way, you're being a little bit too modest. You're very talented and super smart. So let's just not get confused by that. Um, the really cool thing about uh, working with these massive brands is that you actually have been able to travel into different countries as well. So you've been able to see not only the effects from different markets, but also how each one uh, plays into the core foundation of the brand in different countries, which is really, really amazing. So we do have some questions for you and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into them right now. Um, the first one that we have here is, um, uh, we, we were talking before off camera a little bit and you were talking about the power of brand collaborations. Now, it's very interesting because in this market, everybody, you know, a lot of companies are very focused on themselves. And when they do yeah. collaborations, they do them with companies that are outside of their main niche. But you were mentioning a few interesting things, how, um, you know, BMW and Mercedes Benz connected to do ride shares. Um, and I found that really fascinating. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about the power of brand collaborations, where you go from looking at people as competitors to actually looking at them as allies? So, yes, uh, it, I have a very clear uh, this, uh, this aspect, but uh, before uh, I would like to, to share with all of you what uh, we mean uh, with uh, this kind of collaborations. Uh, as a marketer, I have always uh, collaborated with, uh, again, agencies, other brands, just uh, for example, during events, uh, I was in the uh, spirits beverage um, industry and even in home and personal care industry. So you all the time you need to work with the, someone else. Um, but uh, recently, as you said, the big brands starting to, to, to have a kind of collaboration that is called competition. Uh, competition, sorry, that uh, in the end is when two business uh, competitors decide to, to be together because they have a common hope or let's say they have a common needs and together they know they can be better uh, reach their goals. So the example you brought uh, BMW with the drive now and uh, uh, Mercedes with, with the car to go, I think uh, everyone uh, who lives in a city where uh, there is car to go, probably now they also know about drive uh, now, but together now they are shared now. 
So this was interesting because at the beginning I thought, oh my God, Mercedes and BMW, really? I, I grew up in the car world because my father were, was a car dealer. So I was very, very surprised. Not because they put together, we saw a lot of uh, new uh, company thanks to some, uh, you know, partnership, new FCA, for example, that now is also with the Pejo. So that is different. In this case, two brands decided to share their know-how, their experience, their products, their skills. It's all about trustness. So they are sharing many things because they have a one common goal to be sure that they will reach the perfect things for their stakeholders and mainly their customers, their clients. And if uh, uh, someone uh, uh, went uh, deeply on that, they didn't uh, stop just uh, with this drive now platform where you can pick a little smart or a, a countryman uh, mini Cooper or cars like that. But they decide also to go head over because together they are trying to build their uh, automated driving technology. So they are going very, very, I mean, they are adding uh, all their knowledge. They're sharing all their knowledge and they know what they're doing. We are not talking about two new, yeah. you know, companies. So they know exactly what they are doing. Another example, and I remember at that time I was uh, in San Francisco in the U.S. Uh, after many years in Milan. So I was very, very surprised. I, I was, uh, we were working as Campari America with the Starbucks uh, for a small part of their business uh, because the beverage part is not their focus, wasn't their focus. And I heard about this news uh, that. Uh, Princi Bakery, that is an Italian company of bakery from Milan, was uh, coming to the US market. And I was quite surprised. But the reality, they worked together. They decided to um, put together their knowledge with the, the big player within the US market, right? The Starbucks. So they started with in Seattle. And they create a new concept, uh, the um, I can't, the reserve uh, roastery concept. Yeah, the, 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 the big uh, concept in, in Milan, which was like the big. Yeah, later they, exactly, later they brought that in Milan too. But the point is that thanks to this partnership, um, Princi Bakery could start a new business uh, I think in the biggest market, <laughs> you know, the US. And on the other side, Starbucks, that was already very developed all around the world, uh, thanks to Princi Bakery, could enter in a very tough market for them. Because uh, for who, who doesn't know, in Italy, we have a specific culture about uh, the coffee, the espresso, the cappuccino, the brioche. It's everything but the experience you have at the Starbucks. So I think this is another great example. Again, they share their knowledge, their business, their products, uh, their know-how, everything. But they had one uh, goal. Together, they needed to develop their, their business in other markets. Another easier, uh, I mean, smaller example probably, but uh, because we're talking about a digital uh, platform, I couldn't uh, uh, also bring this example to you guys. Uh, think about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a social platform that I remember at that time, uh, the idea was uh, for mainly people like me who are uh, owner of themselves, right? I, I, had, I always work uh, with, for a company, with a company on brands and things like that. So they were a platform where I could sell myself to the next company, let's say. And uh, they decided to work together with the main professional agenters that were more, uh, they had more experience than just a platform. I'm talking about that time, not uh, LinkedIn today, that is awesome. Yeah. And they Hunter's uh, a company on the other side, they accepted uh, to be partner with the LinkedIn. And today, many of them work very close to, to LinkedIn. So I think, uh, I hope these three examples are helping you guys uh, to understand how it's important to collaborate. Of course, yes. this is a strong mm -hmm. collaboration. It, in fact, is a co-petition. But uh, again, don't forget, we can't uh, know everything. We don't have all the answers. So working together, we can uh, better 
reach our goals. Which is yeah. really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Luca? And yes, I think it's a very important topic nowadays because um, it's a very uh, common need for everyone to share uh, the knowledge, to share experiences, uh, not being separated, not consider uh, everyone competitors like it was a um, few years ago. Go to school yeah. style. It's yeah. an old school style. Uh, it's an old school style. Yes. So and now it's more and more um, important not to be um, uh, selfish uh, as a brand, as a company, uh, as an agency. But it's very important to share the knowledge, uh, to share uh, the same um, needs and the same goals. Mm -hmm. and not being scared to uh, put themselves together, put ourselves together. Yeah. Yeah. If we have a common, a common goal, a common, a common scope. Uh, yeah, so it, it's a very imp important topic. What, uh, what Maria Cristina is saying now, is talking about now. It's very, very important. And I think it's a very contemporary uh, topic especially especially now in a very uh, critical uh, worldwide situation like this where if you live and work only by yourself and think about only your specific uh, goals you don't go anywhere anymore right. yeah and you know what i think that uh, thank you so much for that it, it makes really a lot of sense and um, before we move on to the next question um, there's something that i also want to add there which i think is important for everyone to notice when we're talking about these collaborations, the, the, the key thing to know how and who to collaborate with, because a lot of people are like, well, what makes the most sense? This is where knowing your brand and knowing your values and your culture makes the most sense. So when you notice it wasn't BMW and Fiat, it was BMW and Mercedes. They're on the upper level of luxury automobiles. And so being able to share that knowledge back and forth is actually building them up. It's not sharing information that doesn't matter. That would maybe maybe they do something, you know, this is more of a long-term strategy. Same thing with Starbucks and Princey, right? They're both at the level of service. It's kind of like quick, fast, efficient, but high quality food and, 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 and coffees. And so I think knowing, you know, the brand that you're going into and, Anytime you get into a partnership, if it's not 50-50 in terms of what the benefit is going to be, then it's going to lose from the start because you're going to have different goals. You're going to have different objectives. And then the overall creative is not going to execute at the level that you needed to to understand the reports to better improve your business. And I think that's something important for people if they didn't realize all of those collaborations that Maria Cristina mentioned, they're all very much in that same space so they can actually help each other grow. They're not kind of competing in the same space that they're trying to collaborate in. They needed to have the same need as well, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. So, um, okay, so we have about five more minutes with Maria Cristina. There's a really great question here that, 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 we, that we got that I would love to ask you because you've worked with so many companies and brands inside of these major businesses. So um, we have a question here and it says, uh, it's kind of like a two part question. So what are big brands doing better than small brands right now? And also what are small brands doing bigger than big brands right now? And I think that would be an interesting question to kind of keep the conversation going. It, actually, uh, it's a tricky question because uh, I think uh, sometimes some small brands and some big brands are doing better things than other brands. Okay, so sometimes it's the same thing. This can happen, but in general, uh, the, the main thing that the big brands uh, uh, are doing better in now specifically, but in general, is the fact that uh, because they have uh, resources in terms of people, timing, knowledge, know-how, and uh, important uh, is also the budget, the money, and because uh, um, the experience they had uh, and the know-how and the access to the best partners uh, as, for example, agencies uh, or other kind of uh, partners, um, because of these things, uh, they, for sure, when they know what they do, when they have a clear strategy, they are, what they're doing better is uh, 
plan every day, is planning every day. Um, so they are uh, able to immediately probably change something because they have all the resources you need in this case, but don't forget they have the brand, this, uh, they have a, a clear brand strategy or brand identity. This is the main thing, but there is also um, the fact that they, because they are experienced, they also are very good to keep being consistent. That is a, an element that is fundamental. So they know what happens uh, if they are not consistent because they create confusion in their consumers. So this is, a, this is another thing. So it's a big, uh, it probably is not a, a concrete answer, but uh, makes they, um, I think it give the, gives the idea of what I mean. On the other side, small brands in this moment, uh, uh, especially, I think uh, what they are doing better than big uh, uh, brands are two things. Uh, first of all, they risk less than a big brand, so they can take more risk. And sometimes, especially in moments like this, uh, uh, can be an advantage. On the other side, they are good at adapting and at changing because they are small, they are slim. And uh, also because of all of these things, uh, they, especially recently, they, they are more good uh, by hearing their customer, clients, followers than a big brand sometimes. Right. So, and why this? I think uh, the small brand today is very hungry than a big brand. A big brand usually is in a bigger company. They are confident, you know, they, they will be there even after this strange moment, strange period. And the other things, the, the small brand still recalls, recall very well what their dream is. The mission oh. statement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 It's really, it's really interesting because I think, and those are really great points because I think it, it's going to bring a lot of value to people that are listening to this because like you said, like on one hand, when you're a big brand, you know, you have the budgets, you have the, you know, the, 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 uh, the people and, you know, everybody in the organization to invest and really make things really polished and really great. But then on the other hand, they have a lot more levels to go through before they can make decisions. Whereas small brands, they can just decide something with three people, two people, five people in a room. And in this type of marketplace, it's a, it's a strength because now if the market changes, you can just adapt and you can execute a lot faster um, than some of the bigger brands. And, you know, that's kind of what I was noticing. Um, so there are pros and cons. And then one thing I just want to mention, I think is important is that Corona, uh, th th this whole situation right now, in my opinion, I believe it really leveled out the playing field and it gave smaller brands and startup brands a bigger chance and a bigger shot than I think some of them are realizing. So I just want to kind of put this into perspective for people. So when you're a startup or a small brand and you have, you know, two or three or five or 10 employees, for example, and because of Corona, because of this whole situation, you had to drop your employees to two listen, nobody wants to do that. It's very difficult, but you went down eight people. Now what happens is these bigger brands, let's say they have a thousand, 2000, 5,000, when they go down from, you know, 5,000 to 600 employees, well, now the gap between small brands and big brands aren't as, isn't as big as it used to be. And I think that, you know, obviously people get intimidated by the big companies and the brands, but looking at the um, looking at the economics right now, and looking at the actual facts of how these brand, these companies are shifting, I think that it puts smaller brands in a much bigger space um, to be able to be closer to their competition than they think. I I totally agree. Luca, yes, what do you think? Um, no, yes, it's something very, um, you know, it's a, it's a theme, it, it's a topic that also. Um, me and Michele, my, my business partner in Crescenzi and Co, feel in a very strong way because, um, of course, as everyone uh, in the past eight months, uh, we had to face a very difficult and critical moment like everyone else. Um, but what we did, uh, we are anyway a, a small agency compared to to the biggest one, to the 
biggest and international ones. What we um, are trying to do uh, also now uh, is adapting our agency, adapting our um, our uh, services and our strategies uh, to the new needs of our customers. So we are uh, changing in a very, very fast way that was um, unthinkable and unpredictable uh, seven, seven months ago. So uh, we know, uh, me and Michele, that the situation will be critical probably also in the next month. But uh, if there is something that for us is very challenging and also very um, moving is that uh, we have the chance to change and to uh, adapt our, our business in a very faster way than before, uh, because we uh, we can risk everything, and so we we have nothing to risk. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, right. 100%. I, I'm joking, but <clears throat> you know what I mean. It's now. It's the moment to um, moving uh, fast forward and maybe doing things that uh, just six months ago uh, would have taken more time uh, to be done. Uh, now we can say, okay, <clears throat> let's, do that. let's invest in, 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 this, in this field, in this, in this business. Uh, let's um, uh, improve our skill in, in this part of our business. And now anyway, uh, it, it's difficult because emotionally, uh, we are overwhelmed by a lot of bad news, but from a, a business point of view, um, we had, uh, we, we have more courage to do things that a uh, few yeah, months ago, right? yes, were considered more risky for us, okay? Because everything was going very well and we had our business um, focused on, some uh, very precise uh, things. Uh, now we are discovering also the, the pleasure to be more uh, innovative, to be uh, not to be scared to go to a client and say, why we don't do this? Why we don't do that? Uh, we can do something more, something different. Don't consider ourselves as you consider ourselves before, because now we can do this and that, and our skills are uh, developing, improving. And so it's very hard moment on one hand, uh, but it's also a very challenging uh, moment on the other. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so, um... We got to have to say goodbye to Maria Cristina right now. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time. I think uh, to have somebody at your level of expertise um, is invaluable and, and we really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah, you for having me. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Thank you. Wow. Just be quickly before you go. So um, if people want to get a hold of you, they can find you on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, absolutely, Maria Cristina Iaselli. So I, I think also on Instagram, Macriase, it's a little bit complicated. So probably on LinkedIn is the, the right way to do that. Okay, so, great. So guys, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Bye, Joe. ciao. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.